Namdi Asmoa is the star and now Emmy-nominated lead producer of the film Sylvie's Love. Now, this project was first announced in the trades about seven years ago. So I'm wondering, what was the project like when you came on board and how had it changed since it had started? Oh, I don't, I actually don't know how it might have changed. I didn't see, I never read the initial script, the very first script. Um, the script I got, it was maybe three years ago. Um, and uh, it was a lovely script. <laughs> there wasn't a lot of work that needed to be done to it. Um, but I'm sure from the time that it originated to the time it got to me, the team changed around. Um, but uh, Eugene Ash and Gabrielle Glor pretty much have been around the entire time. Yeah, can you talk about having Eugene Ash as your director? Because he's got, uh, you know, as I can see on IMDb, one other feature credit. Yeah, I mean, as a producer, I, I, I love looking for the new fresh talent. You know, I think that it, 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 sometimes it can become a little stale when you're seeing the same folks all the time, um, it, even though they're doing great work. Uh, so Eugene having one credit, I, I wanted to see what that work was. And I, I watched the film, the film that he made called, called Homecoming. Um, and I thought it was great. You know, I thought it was great. I was like, boy, you give this guy, you know, some more resources. And I think he could really take off. And once I read that script uh, from Sylvie's Love, it was like, this is a guy that you can champion. And let's see how, how great it can become. Yeah, can you talk more about staffing? Uh, another one I noticed is your composer, uh, Fabrice Lecomte. He you know, has a very long career, but not necessarily in film. No, but uh, Fabrice matches a style that we were really going for and just making sure that, you know, it's an American film, but there was some of this European flavor. Um, I think just in shooting it and the music, just, uh, you know, everything. I mean, in the story, the characters end up going to to France, to Paris, to uh, to play jazz. So it was always a part of it. And then Fabrice just uh, really had an ear for the type of music that we were going for. And Eugene ended up bringing him in uh, to the process pretty early on. And I, it just clicked all around. And, you know, Fabrice was wonderful. I like that word you use, flavor, because I think this uh, movie really does have like a very specific flavor. Can you talk about what that is? Yeah, I mean, well, the goal, I think, from the start was how can we um, make Black people look and feel as beautiful as possible on screen, um, especially during the civil rights era. So a lot of times we're, when we see things during that era, you know, we're you know, there's water hose or police or, you know, there's something going on that makes us, um, we're in fight mode, you know, and uh, we wanted to sort of just show what happened to regular people during that time as well. And look at how beautiful we were and, and the normal everyday things that we did um, when we weren't, you know, always fighting for, uh, you know, the, the rights that we so greatly deserved, you know, it was just like some people are going to fall in love during that period too. Some people are going to have kids. Um, some people are going to just want to hang out with their friends and go to the dance down the street, you know? And so it's like, let's sort of show some of that. And so I think that was a part of the flavor that we really wanted to tap into um, from the costumes uh, with Phoenix Mello to the music to, you know, just about all of it. We wanted to, to make sure that we hit that. So you've got Tessa Thompson playing Sylvie. What does she bring as a performer? Oh, oh she's dynamic. You know, she, <laughs> she's got a way of working with the camera that, you know, we, none of us were accustomed to, we hadn't seen uh, before, we hadn't worked with people like that before. She just has a, a lightness um, and a presence that's, that's really remarkable, you know, and we didn't know that that, we, we were looking for Sylvie, we didn't know exactly what was going to come. Um, we really wanted her to do it. But again, and she'd say this too, we've never seen Tessa in a role like this, so how, you know, how do you know what you're going to get? But she's just such a phenomenal actor and I knew her personally. And so I knew that 
all of these aspects were in her and she just brought them out in just such a beautiful way. And then I think Declan Quinn, our cinematographer, really found a great way to, um, to shoot her and to shoot myself and just to make us really pop on screen. And I think that that always helps. Now this came out in December, then two days later, Bridgerton came out. So I want to ask about uh, casting Ray Sean Page. Uh, what did um, you see in him, you know, before everyone else saw him? It's one, listen, there are a handful of casting moves that were made in this that I'm like, you know, super proud of. And this is one of them just because I saw him, uh, he was in Roots, the miniseries, um, and I just remember watching him and him standing out in just a crazy way because he had to do, he had to jump through some hoops for the role of Chicken George, which was what he played. You know, it's such a difficult role to play. And I just thought he nailed it. And I thought he was so, um, he had such a presence about him and just like, and, and he was rooted in truth. And so when I read this script, he was the first guy that came to mind. And so I got his information. I met with him. This is long before we're making it. This is before we financed it. And I just told him, listen, I know you've only done like a couple of things, but I saw you in Roots and I think you'd be great for this. And he was like, oh, yeah, great. And then I think it was maybe a year and a half later when we started shooting. It might have even might have been more than that uh, when we started shooting. And he was just like, man, I can't believe it actually happened. You know, we talked so long ago and I, I talk with people all the time about roles and the projects never happen. And I was like, I can't believe it happened either, but here we are. And so I was very excited about that. We didn't know about Bridgerton. Um, I think we finished shooting before he even got the role in Bridgerton or anything. I don't, I don't know how it all worked, but timing is everything. And so it really helped us that he was in our, our project as well, because it got, got us the views and he was just so dynamic in it. It's, it's really great. Can you talk about any uh, challenges that you came across in kind of financing and scheduling and getting things going? Uh, we, I think every day was a challenge. I, can't, I don't even know what the, the biggest challenge is to tell you about. I mean, anybody that's made a, a film before and an independent film knows that it's it's hell to do and it rarely works out and it and and even when it works out it's not it's it's rarely good you know you uh your heart is broken i think every five minutes uh, along the way and so we had definitely had our challenges um in terms of financing we didn't want to go to individuals financing. We didn't, I, I know that we didn't want my company to be putting in money outside of development. Um, we wanted to go to studios. And so we did, and we went to, you name it, we went there and everyone turned us down, um, you know, one after the other. And it always seemed like we had a chance and then just didn't work out. You know, people were saying that they couldn't really see a market for the film at the time. Um, there were too many challenges in the storyline. Uh, they, they, we don't know who this director is, um, so we can't, put, you know. And I, they, everyone has their reasons, and it happens all the time. But um, ultimately, we just said, "Let's go make it." Um, and then my company was able to do financing along with other angel investors that just came in and really saved the day for us. Um, and really believed in what we made. I think it's always good to, when you're an independent filmmaker, to, if you can get some of the financing to start shooting and put a little piece together, maybe five minutes or so, 10 minutes, and show other financiers and say, this is what we're working on. This is where we are. Can you help us finish the project? And we were able to do that. We were able to get people to, to really step up. But um, yeah, it was a long road. It was a long road full of no's. And, um, and then you make it and everyone's like, oh, it's great. And I'm like, yeah, yeah, thanks. <laughs> yeah, it came out at Sundance and then uh, Amazon acquired it. Uh, they released it almost a year later. Uh, Amazon is releasing a lot of movies these days, but this one's different in that they're, you know, they were pushing it for awards uh, for 
the Winter Awards, sometimes like at the Golden Globes, they push it as more of a feature film for the Emmys. Now it's a TV movie. Uh, what has that process been like and kind of going back and forth? The Amazon process, I'll be honest with you, has been amazing. They have, they stepped up in a huge way. Jen Salky was big in that. And she's such a personable person. You know, she's, she's not standoffish. We talk on the phone and are emailing and texting and really trying to, um, and we really tried to make the marketing and the message behind the film stand out. And she was there every step of the way. And the entire team, um, the marketing team behind it, they really, they went above and beyond. And I, I think we, I think we started with some uh, some screenings, some smaller screenings. And I think the reaction definitely helped fuel more from uh, the Amazon team and the marketing side. Like, you know, no one, you, you never really know what you have until you have people that aren't attached to it, watching it and seeing their reaction. And I think those reactions really helped us. And then Amazon stepped up in a major way and said, let's go make this happen in the, in the biggest way we possibly can. You know, obviously we, it wasn't a uh, $50 million film. So the, we only had so much in the budget for marketing, but I think we spent every single penny uh, and, and, and they did the best with it. And I'm very pleased. Uh, the film has that one Emmy nomination. If it got, you know, one other one, uh, what would you have hoped it would have been? Um, I don't know. I couldn't, I can't single, it's tough to single one uh, person or group out um, because I hired everyone and I'm like, they're all like my, you know, I, I'm, I'm so pleased with everyone's work on it. Um, I think the us being nominated as a film in general is the greatest feeling, you know, that's the greatest reward right there because that, you know, that, that's everyone, you know, that's hair and makeup who were phenomenal. That's costumes uh, who are phenomenal. That's the DP, that's the director, writer, producers. Um, that's the amazing cast. That's the production design. That's the music. You know, it's a, everyone is a part of that. So I'm, I think I'm most happy that that's what we got nominated for. I introduced you at the start as a producer and an actor. Uh, is that kind of what you think of yourself? Like, I'm wondering if you're at a party, do you say that you're, you know, former NFL all-star or are you uh, touting your, you know, insane charity work or what do you think of yourself as? Uh, I, I <laughs> what do you think of yourself? <laughs> That's an interesting question. I mean, in this business, definitely producer and actor. Um, not one or the other, you know, I'd say both. I, I really came into the business thinking, oh, let me try acting. Let me see how that is. I, you know, I like movies and it was just that naive, like, let me go in. And then you realize, oh, no one really wants to hire a former NFL player to be in their movie because they're like, you don't know what you're doing. We're going to get someone that's trained to do it. But um, you know, I believed in what I could do. And I knew that I, I know, I know what, my work ethic is. And I know that, you know, no one's gonna outwork me. I'm gonna figure everything out. I'm, I'm just gonna learn it. Like there's a belief in myself. So I just said, let me start producing my own projects. That's the only way I'll be able to, to show that I can act. And then I fell in love with producing. So I can't have one without the other. They're both a part of my journey. And so I, I would consider myself an actor producer. Um, but yeah, I have a lot of chapters in my life, past and present, but actor producer is where I'd go. And what do you have next? Uh, I I think I have lunch and then I'll take a nap. And, <laughs> no, I, I don't know. Um, I don't know. I, I've got a few things that we're working on. There's nothing that's um, that I put out with an announcement. You know, that stuff is always tricky. You don't want to jinx stuff. You want to like work through it and. Um, I don't know what type of person you are, you are, but I, I like to get the work done and then present it um, before like making a big to do of it. But there's some there's some good stuff that I'm working on. All right. Now, Dave, well, uh, thanks very much for chatting with Gold Derby and uh, best of luck at the Emmys this summer. Yeah, thank you. It was great.